Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you're on the world. Welcome to the latest in our sequence of webcasts, The Mirror. You will have uh, seen the call to action on this. We're, we're talking today about enhancing purchaser pay and order to cash performance and impact, particularly in uh, finance operations, shared service centers, GBS. So we're talking AP, credit and collections, and how we can make some smart moves to work better together and raise our performance. So my name is Dan French. I'm uh, founder and CEO of Consider Solutions. I'm the guy on the left. I'm very pleased to be joined today by Jamie Radford, who's the founder of the Accounts Payable Association, the global community of AP professionals and P2P professionals. Welcome, Jamie. Morning and afternoon. Welcome, Dan. And uh, equally, I'm very pleased to introduce Mark Harrison, who's the, uh, the founder and chief vision officer of Callisto Grant that runs the credit and collections community. And again, a, a an important group of subject matter experts and leaders. Welcome, Mark. So, the context, you know why we're here. Um, with this whole idea came from some conversations that, you know, my accounts payable is your accounts receivable if you're, you know, if you're my supplier and, and vice versa. And we know we're all being driven to optimize and drive our key financial processes get more out of them, get better customer experience, and deliver greater value for the organizations. And a lot of this is about our skills and knowledge and expertise. So what can we learn from each other, from our, from our own teams and our colleagues and our peers to help drive greater performance? And you know, that's why Jamie and Mark are, are such a key element of this. So you know, Jamie is a kind of lifelong procurement P2P and AP leader, and um, and a guru in his own uh, lunchtime. And uh, likewise, Mark has been in credit collections that ordered a cash all his life, and he is an expert. And both these guys run global communities. And I think that's one of the great things about this, is how do we bring the communities together so we can learn more? So the dynamics are pretty clear. This is the idea of the mirror. You know, where, you know whether you're a buyer or supplier, the accounts payable and accounts receivable um, activities are mirror images and we the more we understand about our counterpart the better off we can operate and maybe better understand and be uh, better at our own roles now with the economic headwinds obviously um, working capital is always important but um, it's moving center stage and you know th there's no more central element to the driver behind working capital than debtors and uh, creditors and that's exactly what we're doing what we're talking about here in terms of um, accounts payable and accounts receivable. So we're in uh, we're in good company, and it's a good time to be having this conversation. Um, this is our agenda. It's a uh, it's a 30 minute session, so we're going to be respectful of your time. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about process thinking, and then I'm going to ask Mark to talk about why this mirror matters from a credit collections point of view, and I'm going to ask Jamie to talk about the same from accounts payable and P2P point of view. Then I'm going to come back with some key takeaways and recommendations and, and actually some specific recommendations that you can take away from this with your teams and drive some better, um, you know, improved understanding and, and perhaps, you know, some ideas, maybe some you thought about, maybe some you haven't. There's going to be a Q&A session, so please do ask questions in your GoToWebinar interface as a question panel. So pop questions in as soon as they come into your head, pop the question in and we'll endeavor to answer them at the end. The ones we can't don't have time to respond to today, we'll do by email. But it's it's really important you get those questions in because it helps make this a more um, informative and thought-provoking event for everyone and also helps us improve these uh, these sessions. So that's uh, that's our agenda. So so on this call, we have, uh, we've got about 370 people from around the world on this call. And there are obviously many P2P, AP, subject matter experts and leaders. There's many credit and collections, order to cash, subject matter experts and leaders. But there's also a lot of people on this call who are who run both of those groups, the financial operations leadership, the shared services and GBS leadership. So I wanted to just use that, you know, a bit of context. So we, we ran a survey um, a little while ago for um, finance operations leaders, GBS, shared services leaders, about a number of aspects of what's expected of the role from their leadership, um, but also about the aspirations, which I found really interesting. So, so obviously the expectations, you can work out what that is all about. Um, a lot of that is around cost reduction and, and service. 
But the aspirations of um, leaders in this area are the idea to drive a enhanced reputation as a value creator as well as a cost reducer. So we know cost reduction is always on the agenda, but you can't cost reduce your way to success. So that's kind of important. Then this idea of becoming a center of excellence with the expertise to optimize and automate as well as operate. So this is continuous improvement, that's great. And that's part of what we're doing today. And then this idea of driving end-to-end -end business process collaboration, maybe business process ownership, but this idea of looking end-to-end -end beyond the silos, because you know, GBS and shared services and finance operations, you know, we are silos and it's our job to kind of get out of the silo and really create end-to-end -end value. And that's part of the conversation about digitizing integrated processes that deliver more value to the business. And if we do all of that, we're going to drive a great talent pipeline for the entire business, which obviously is a mixed blessing because you don't want to lose your people. But it's great news when they are recognized in the organization as really driving value. Now, those aspirations are, are great, um, but executing on some of those is kind of interesting. And the, the questions are often simple, but the answers are not. And I love this little cartoon. What you tend to find, and certainly I find, is quite often the answers to what apparently simple questions are actually a bit more complicated than you might think, and a bit more nuanced. So this road less traveled idea on the right hand side is quite interesting. Um, and it's really a derivation of this Dunning-Kruger effect. If those of you who've uh, heard any three of us speak will have heard about Dunning-Kruger, it, I'm fascinated by it because it is a, a, a massive impact on our working lives. And we all suffer from it. And that's the funny thing, it, everyone suffers from it, is this, I, this cognitive bias that says intelligent people when faced with a domain they don't really understand um, can be or have no experience of because of their, you know, the, the fact they're bright and they're used to making decisions and, and all that, they, they have a very high degree of confidence in something they don't really have much knowledge about. And as you see, if you have the misfortune or fortune to have to implement the decision, opinion or plan that came up, um, you realize that as with more experience, you, your confidence drops massively and say, actually, this is much more complicated than I thought. There's a lot more nuance to it. And if you are lucky enough to become a subject matter expert on the right hand side, then your confidence grows. But it's never you're never as confident as a subject matter expert as you were as a naive optimist, which is really, really interesting, which comes to that point that when you're talking to a real expert and you ask them a question, even a simple question, they're usually a little bit more thoughtful about the response and they don't, you don't get a knee jerk response. So kind of, I find that very, very interesting. Obviously there's a few jokes in many of the companies I've worked in about that because you can, uh, you can make some fun uh, with that. But the first thing about this cognitive bias is we, we use a lot of words in, in our work. And yeah, we talk about processes, we talk about order to cash and purchase to pay. And we talk about these, these things as business processes. But the funny thing is, when you use this term, a lot of people have different thoughts in their mind about what you're referring to. And one of the big things we've got to do in every area of business, but certainly in AP and uh, credit and collections, they are, we've got to understand what do we mean by that? And it's, I encourage you to take this in your own teams, in your own organizations to ask people, what do you think, what, how do you define a business process? Is it those things at the top? Or is it a little bit more subtle and nuanced, the road less traveled, if you like, uh, below, you know, about the, about the idea of producing an outcome, about the bringing value to customers and the company itself, about the experience and the habits and behaviors involved, not just the technologies and policies. And I think that's really, really important because it helps us as we, as we want to learn more about how to operate at peak performance. It, it helps us to, to think about that. So I'd encourage you to have, a, have uh, some thought about that. So obviously some you know, business processes, classically, the source to pay, procure to pay, is a classic end-to-end -end cycle, which uh, AP is on the right-hand side of that. And of course, with a little shine of light on it, the, the stakeholders, the wide group of stakeholders across the end-to-end -end process and the major steps within it. Now, we know, you know, any one of us on this call knows that 95% you know, of the issues on the right-hand side of these processes are caused by decisions taken on the left-hand side. So in accounts payable, it's the decisions taken in goods receipting and orders and supplier master data, all those things. And the same is true for order to cash, customer to cash. It's exactly the same problem. When you're in credit and collections, 95% of the problems that you encounter are created or caused to the left-hand side. And it's partly because we have this silo mentality. We're not thinking end-to-end. -end. But it's kind of an interesting way of, of, of getting a view of that. And of course, everyone 
tells us that you know, the answer is to automate, digitize, and, and that's great, but I love this quote, this study, cautionary tale from Bill Gates, this idea that you apply technology to an efficient operation will magnify the efficiency of it, but if you apply automation to an inefficient operation, it will magnify the inefficiency, and we see that so often, so it's just kind of a little word of caution there, and uh, I'm sure there'll be a few wry smiles on that. So that's my introduction. I want to introduce now Mark. Um, as I say, he's uh, the guru and the leader of the uh, credit and collections community. And so, Mark, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about the challenges and why the mirror matters and a little bit about the, the community. So over to you, Mark. Thanks. Uh, thanks very much, Dan. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's... It, um... Over the years, since we since we uh, since we kind of put uh, uh, Callisto Grand together over the last twelve years or so, it really was very much in the um, observation of everything that Dan's been saying. Uh, having worked in shared services myself as a uh, mayor credit manager in a uh, um, couple of major major organisations, um, we really kind of came across um, really all the things that we've listed here. Um, and um, I'll, just, I'll just quickly go through them, all the ones that haven't been mentioned before. Um, uh, when we talk about end-to-end -end knowledge, I mean, uh, from our perspective, um, we're not, it, it, it actually goes beyond, it actually goes beyond the, uh, just the order to cash area. Um, so it's going right upstream, right, right to the point of buying raw materials, manufacturing, um, yeah, into um, into inventory deliveries, etc., all the way through, right, right the way through. Because at the end of the day, every activity that takes place in a company manifests itself in a sales invoice, and every invoice goes through the order to cash area. Um, so, so, and 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 as Dan said, we 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 really got these silos. We got we got uh, risk. We got invoicing. We got collections. We got cash allocation. We got dispute management, uh, reporting, often all working independently. And and really, for everything to uh, for for an effective credit department, um, they all have to be joined up and working together. Um, it kind of when I started working in this area a few decades ago, it was a lot simpler. We called it credit control, and and we were there to control credit. Um, so we, we, the, the, these terms, I say, within order to cash or O to C, I to C, C to C, P to C, Q to C, whatever it is. They, they they didn't exist and, and it seems to be a fairly recent phenomenon um so that so they, they, these silos kind of lead very much to a, a an orientation just around process and then the process uh again being limited to a um into a silo and, and we come up we often come up with sort of misleading job titles um we, we call people subject matter experts um when they're really not anything of the sort, they're they're, they're just very good at a process. You know, um, the, the, the sub to be a subject matter expert, you have to really understand all the nuances of your business. Like like I said just now, you know, where do, where does all the data come from in terms of the credit side of things? You know, it all starts at the point of purchase and so on, um, and manifests through to an invoice to customers and so on. So um, so that's a little bit misleading, um, and. Um, and as the years have gone by and the generations have gone by, it the the, the consequence of that really is that people that were now um, managers are often really just kind of more uh, more experienced processors. Uh, they, they, they also have uh, they they don't have the EQ that uh, that was mentioned before because they're also just working within a fairly limited range of uh, area and understanding, and, and they're not encouraged to go beyond. Um, one one of our one of our clients on the on the academy side, um, their mantra in their company is be curious, focused, and brave, right? And it's no coincidence that they have the best uh, uh, overdue KPIs that I, I've seen uh, in the shared service centre arena, and particularly here in Central Europe, um, because they encourage everybody to think way beyond just the the small horizon of what they're doing. Um, a lot of this also uh, another challenge really is that um, the, the, the consideration of investing into training and uh, qualifications and so on um, it, it's really low and it's still very much a top-down um, uh, a top-down decision um, and, and it it pains us like now we're into quarter four it's like the budget season and quarter one and so on and uh, you know, we'll be trying to encourage 
people to work with ads and often the teams are very keen to do so um but they'll say oh we've only got we've only got a budget of 10,000 euro and we've got 100 people so this year we will train 20 and next year we'll train to train, train 20 um and it really has to be the other way around you know it really has to be that the the team the real managers of the departments are going up to the uh, you know, up to their line manager saying i want x thousand amount of um investment not and it's not only around qualifications that's the important part and and really kind of pushing these areas like we're talking about here in the mirror is creating the environment that um, people working in credit can can spend some time in accounts payable they don't have to leave to go work in accounts payable they can just go for a few afternoons or a few hours and go and shadow and really get to understand um, what goes on in, in AP and in the shared service center environment we're talking about somebody walking 10 or 20 meters from one department to another um, and to but to set up the whole structure you know that this is for everybody irrespective of their their job role or the length of time they've been in the company um, and this is what builds the this is this is the start because when, once you get into accounts payable then you start thinking about p2p when you start thinking about p2p you start thinking about um you know the the whole kind of manufacturing and supply chain cycle Th this is what engenders um this really engenders um empowerment engagement interest um and and, and this is where the investment is so it's investment in money absolutely and it's investment in time and it's investment in creating the right environments um and when we go across uh, you know the, the the consequence of the way things are is I, certainly speaking for where i'm based in central europe the the average attrition rate is 20 percent in every department so that's one person in five it's constantly on the move to uh, to another department, um, which if you think about that in real terms, you've got a team of 100 people. That means 20 people are under notice leaving and 20 people have just joined. So that's actually 40 people right, are, are actually are not working at maximum uh, output um, or, or, or levels of experience or whatever. So it all seems over the last, I don't know, 20, 20 years or so that the that, that, that things like uh, uh, attrition rates at 20 percent that's just become an accepted norm um because we've had zero interest rates over the last few years the, the pressure on actually collecting cash so that the penalties of short-term borrowing are, are, are almost negligible like you go back into the, the 70s and the 80s and the 90s and interest rates were in double figures so there was um there was more pressure on short-term borrowing and therefore also that meant more more focus on actually collecting money and so on so so the bars are very low so uh, so just going quickly on to these solutions um so which I'll, I'll i'll just go through very quickly and this is kind of what this is what callisto grand do this is what our academy does we have a whole suite of training products qualifications workshops and so on that really cover all these areas and these are the these are the outputs you know the, the holistic upskilling we call it here and, and the qualifications um professional qualifications are are really driving this the, not not just not just showing people how to calculate a dso or how to make a phone call or a, you know how to calculate a bad debt provision but to really understand the whole business flow right and that's uh and i also say here i i, I put in the word relevant qualifications because we see so often that um so many people in, working in credit and indeed accounts payable are the only offer they're given to do qualification is in accounting right? and and there's you know there's not the, the accounting qualifications are brilliant um but they're not really they're not focused on people working in credit and they're not focused on people working in ap so you, you can see um all the different outputs here um so i've I've done my time. Um, I'd love to talk to you about it more. Um, one um, one area we're, we're coming up very soon um, in, in the middle of October is we're having an annual conference where we bring our community together. Um, this year we're in Budapest, but um, you know, we have people coming from all over, uh, not only from uh, around Europe, they're also coming from the USA and other places about to really enhance our, um, our community. Um, and as Dan said, um, we we would love people from accounts payable to come and join us too because they really kind of get to understand and uh, 
when I have the opportunity to go to Jamie's conference, uh, I will I will take that opportunity. So uh, so that's me done. Thank you. Um, Thank, you, very much. Love to Thank you. Thank you. And if you've got um, any questions, I'm sure that stimulated some thoughts. Again, go to go to webinar, put the questions in. Um, I'm going to ask now, Jamie, uh, to, for you to talk a little bit about your view from the P2P and AP community, your view of the challenges and your view of why the mirror matters. So, so Jamie, give, give us your thoughts. Lovely, thank you. And just conscious of time, so I'll make mine a little bit briefer. Uh, yes, so Jamie Radford. Um, yeah, as Mark says, some of the biggest challenges for the AP community or the procure to pay uh, community tends to be, and let's start with internal processes and complexity. Um, Dan, you mentioned this earlier in your slide. You know, the challenge that AP community and P2P folk have is usually internal processes and the complexity that people put on those internal processes. Big challenge. It's, um, as you said, the, 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 the chart to the left hand side, we can't really control. We can only control the stuff to the right hand side. That's number one. Number two, non compliance. What does that mean? It's people not doing what we're asking them to, whether that's raise requisitions correctly, orders or ultimately our suppliers not doing what we're asking them to. But that comes back to a point which we'll talk about in a little second, which is we're all about communication. Lack of support, and again, you know, Mark mentioned this, support within either your own organization or your wider community and your stakeholders. Yeah, you know, if you're not recognized for the expertise that you give, lack of support's clearly gonna be a bit of a challenge for you. And that final one, it goes back to Mark's point really, around the training and awareness. Again, both internally and externally, um, I'll talk in a second about who we are and what we do, but actually training and the awareness of what we want uh, people to do in our industry is prime. It really is. So not only do we do certification courses, quals and all the good stuff, but actually it's where we need to step over that line and start to train and make our suppliers, our, our customers, our, our stakeholders more aware of what we do. Quick uh, synopsis about who we are as an association. We are based in the UK, but actually we've got a foothold around the world. We look after 50,000 social members, um, and we stand for three things. We are effectively a membership community, um, and we have a huge community, and we have a very supportive community. We run events, and we have a conference, which I'll talk about in a second, and also we run courses, certification, qualifications, and face-to-face -face training. So what can we do? The slide's entitled AP and AR in harmony. How can we work better together? Number one, absolutely. Go back and improve the communication process. Um, every AP and AR team I've ever spoken to have a misunderstanding or a, a non-alignment in the communication of both areas. So we need to look at that. What can we do from an AP community to improve communication with our receivables folk and credit folk? And then go back to the next step, which is what I said earlier, which is the awareness of the process. In the UK, we struggle a little bit in terms of getting smaller suppliers paid, and that's because we don't communicate properly with them. We don't make them aware of the process they're going to have to go through to actually engage and get paid through our, our businesses. Education, Mark mentioned this, perfect one for the mirror. Um, what can we do? We can educate. We can educate our smaller business, our larger businesses, our AR folk. Let's look in the mirror. Let's see how we can communicate across the board. And the last point on this slide, which I wanted to make re relevant, is priorities. Let's make sure that the priorities, either internal or external, the priorities are all around. We want the you know, cash is king. It's a big challenge for everybody at the moment. But make sure your C-suite level or in your organizations understand the priorities that you have as an AP team and the, re the replication of that in the AR side. Um, the last slide before I sort of go pan back onto Dan, as um, Mark mentioned, we're in a conference. It's in Birmingham on October the 12th, all welcome. Um, and absolutely, wherever possible, it'd be lovely to see some AR folk there as well. Dan, back over to you. Thanks so much, Jamie. That's um, a, a very you know, good uh, insight into, into the view of the, the AP and P2P community. So keep those questions coming. I've got a, a, a few kind of considerations and takeaways, and there's, there's eight very specific um, recommendations here which you might want to think about. You might have thought of some of them already, or you might not have, but it's worth thinking about. This is all on the basis of this idea of the mirror. So you may well in your business have customers or also suppliers, in which case you've got double exposure on relationships. So make sure you understand that. Make sure between your O2C and P2P team, AR and AP, make sure you know who are the who are the organizations that operate in both spheres. Because that's really interesting and that helps you understand a lot and helps you understand the, the 
the, both your business and the supplier's business. You may also have some great opportunities to tap into your methods, your education, your tools in both disciplines. So for example, um, one uh, AP manager told me the best thing they ever did was to um, get uh, credit and collections training to learn to be better at accounts payable. And then the idea here may be of applying your credit methodology for supplier assessments. What a great idea. So, you know, discuss it amongst yourselves across teams and you'll be amazed what opportunities and synergies can pop out. The idea of um, the, the psychology of, or the, the, the discussion around dispute management and no negotiation are very much seen as accounts receivable collections topics. But since dispute management is between accounts receivable and accounts payable, then it's kind of interesting to understand the psychology from both perspectives. And again, internally, have discussions around that, about dispute management and negotiation. So both AP and AR people feel you know, a, a, a slightly more informed and slightly more aware of what the, the, the nature of this is going on. Performance priorities, obviously an opportunity to discuss. What are the priorities we are, we've got in um, in P2P, what the opportunity's got in O to C. So if you've got a big focus on um, days payable outstanding, for example, um, it's probably quite reasonable. You should also have a big focus on day sales outstanding because these are kind of cash uh, concerns. So kind of making sure as leaders, we're giving consistency in priorities and demands. And then the next point is you find that your AP and, and credit and collections receivables teams tend to see new trends and new behaviors and technologies coming in at different times, just depending on the, the organizations they're working with. So discuss between what are you between the groups? What are you seeing? What's coming through? What are the trends, whether it's e-invoicing, extensions of EDI, early payment discounting, supply chain finance, whatever it is, you'll find that you will learn something from the other group. Say, oh, we haven't seen as much of that as you're seeing. And you know, that's kind of you know, that's kind of helpful. And of course, stakeholder management in the end-to-end -end process is absolutely key. So we know the executives in procurement and supply, supply chain are key uh, stakeholders in AP, and sales and marketing are key stakeholders in credit and collections. They set the tone. So make sure that your approaches to stakeholder management, you discuss them, you work out how, to, how do you build that coalition of, of, of executive commitment to the changes you want to make. And then this idea of reviews. Um, you know, you will have monthly or quarterly performance reviews for, you know, AP and AR. Think about doing them together. And particularly if you have a, a performance review related to those combined strategic suppliers or also customers, that's definitely worth doing. But I would encourage you to think about doing collaborative reviews about challenges, opportunities and progress. Do them together with the, both the leadership and the teams. So everyone understands what's going on on the other side of the mirror. And then that final point is, you know, when or if you're in a common office, just think about things you can do. And both Mark and Jamie commented on it. Think, you know, think about co-locating teams. Think about sitting next to somebody, um, your opposite number for an afternoon and just seeing what happens as part, of, as part of your day. So these are kind of, you know, just some ideas. You've probably got more. So get, get your teams together and think about what challenges, what opportunities do we have to work together. Now, in all of this, you know, yes, we need a we need the IQ to be able to deal with the, in the tunnel of the activities and the detail of activities, but we also need to be able to look up, you know, look across the end-to-end -end process, see the entire maze, if you like. But this is a business of IQ and EQ. Emotional intelligence is just as important, and you know we should you know dig into that as we as we discuss these mirror challenges. Now. There's clearly no quick fixes or easy hacks, and but you know, there's everybody is trying to tell us that maybe if we apply technology A or technology B, it will solve all our problems. We know that's not true. It might help, but this idea of building a better understanding and a better collaboration between the communities, the professional communities, is a really simple and free idea. So I do encourage you to go to the P2P AP community on LinkedIn and just get part of it and see what's going on, see you know, see what you can learn. And don't just go to that if you're a P2P AP person, go to that if you're a credit collections person as well. And by the same token, the credit and collections community is also on LinkedIn. It's a, it doesn't cost you anything to connect by LinkedIn. And then you'll see, you'll be part of the community, you'll learn stuff and you'll see ideas and lessons being shared. And you'll also learn about the conferences and the education opportunities. I will share this by email as well, but I do encourage you to do it because it takes no effort and it gets you into it. So 
Um, that's what we've been talking about. I um, hope you found that useful. We've got a few questions now, so I'm going to try and get them in. Yeah, we've got a couple of minutes left. So um, it's quite funny. So um, I'm not sure whether this is a compliment or not, <laughs> but this mirror thinking on AP and AR is thought provoking, but obvious. Why do you think it's not more widely discussed? Jamie, what would you say to that? Look, I mean, I think, you know, it's it's that age old thing, back to basics, and sometimes the greatest ideas are the base, most basic of ideas. The reality is we all have these great ideas of fixing huge processes and we put masses of time in putting new automation products, whatever, and we forget the basics. Actually, the mirror concept is one of communication and looking at both sides of the process. Totally agree with whoever put the comment in, but actually it's where it starts. And it's where we need to start as two organizations and two areas start communicating more effectively with one another. Great. Um, I'm just going to jump to another question. I'm going to give this to you, Mark. But um, <laughs> training and education, the first things to be cut from budgets. Do you have any advice? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, don't. <laughs> Basically, it's that old expression, isn't it? You know, what, what happens if we... Uh, um, if we train people and they leave and then the, the other side of it is what happens if we don't train them if they stay um but i, I think really um you know the 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 business world is in such uh is experiencing such headwinds and turbulence now that um it certainly with ar and ap are are the the critical components of working capital working capital is the most important part of every business trade receivables is probably the single biggest asset in most companies so um i kind of think the very fact you have such you know it's such an important part of business that you you really want people working in these areas to have the best possible um support education development and so on so yeah that's a, a good um, it, it's the one everybody there's an interesting a sec secondary question actually from another another attendee that says um how do you, oh, sorry, oh, oh, making accounts payable and credit and collection strategic, how do you get them on the executive agenda? Now, you've kind of touched on that already. So, so Jamie, what, I mean, I'll ask you both to come on that. How do you, people often concerned about how do I, how do we become more relevant and strategic? What, what's your, what's your thought on that, Jamie? Look, I'm not plugging for the conference, but go and go to a conference. Uh, it's it's pretty simple. Go and talk to your peer groups. Go and talk to the people and the experts in the room. Go to, if you're in the payables community, go to a receivables uh, conference and vice versa. You know, the only way to get this up on the agenda of the C-suite is actually keep talking about it and learn from others, definitely. Great. And um, Mark, any final comments on that? Um, no, I agree. And it, it, it kind of... It kind of fascinates me that, that that very point comes up when if we're talking about, you know, the, at the end of the day, we're talking about finance. Every business is all about money and accounts receivable and accounts payable are the money in the company. So it, it does kind of uh, I found it fascinating how that has how it's dropped down the agenda. You know, and it, at, the end, at the end of the day, if, if we're not collecting money, you rest assured the C-suite will find the credit and collections teams, right? Uh, but we don't want them to find it as a means of, um, you know, crisis management. That's a very good point. Well, thank you both, and thank you all for joining us. I've, we're two or three minutes over uh, time, but I hope you found it useful. There's some practical suggestions for you. Do connect to those uh, communities on LinkedIn. I will share that detail again by email to you all. And you know, this this. Uh, there's no monopoly on common sense and good ideas. So the more you can get involved, the better off you'll be. So thank you so much. Um, and uh, see you next time. Have a great day.